Sad. Welcome to your in-depth reading for yours and theirs. Some ground rules before we get started. Yours and theirs is an energy read between yourself and someone else. So it does not have to be about a significant other, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, lover type situation. It's whoever fits the bill in terms of the dynamic I am describing. So it could be about a family member or friend. So do keep that in mind, yeah? Like always and regardless, take what resonates, leave what does not, and reverse those energies as you see fit. More so with yours and theirs, as energy exchange and interchange is real, rapid, and fluid. That being said, these are still general. I know, I know, I know, honey. This intro is in place for a reason, more for me than it is you, but just in case, yeah? These are general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate at all. And as frustrating as that is, it's also extremely normal for collective readings. Check your other placements, you will find yourself in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, I think we got it. What's up? What's up, Sag? <laughs> What's going on, please, for Sag and their person? Show me Sag and their person. Show me Sagittarius, please, and their person. What's going on, please? Show me Sag and their person. So, I went to the Sherwood Forest Fair one last time before they closed for the season. And uh, so much archery was present this year. In fact, a professional grade um, archery or, well, bow and arrow set makers, <laughs> like the real stuff, the quality stuff. So got to uh, try out lots of bows this past weekend uh, with my daughter and do practice shooting. It was fantastic. It's so fun. But of course, I thought about you the whole time. The archer was just everywhere this weekend. So it was great. And I was feeling that sad energy too. You betcha. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Anyway, I hope that you have been feeling yourself and feeling good and relaxed and loose. What's up for Sag, please? Show me Sag. What's going on, please, for Sag and their person? What's going on, please? Let's do one more. Show me Sag, please. What's going on? And actually, you know what? I'm not a bad shot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's going on, please? Not enough to go to competition or anything, but I can I can hold my own pretty well. Page of Wands, Ace of Swords, the hand Ooh, what do we know? Oh yes. It's still developing, but I like how you have taken some time out to understand your particular truth, whatever that is. Don't get me wrong, there's not a lot of work with here. I'll clarify, see what's on your mind. But uh, I like how you have this burgeoning thought in you. Page of Wands, little guy, Ace of Swords. So you have a developing truth that you, when you kind of pick at it and poke it and prod it, you're like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And then the Hanged Man. So that's not fully developed knowledge, but you're on your way. I don't know what it is you're trying to understand, but I like how you've suspended all judgment around it. You're like, you know what? I'm going to take the time to understand this thought and or feeling. Interesting. What's up? Oh. Okay. Death, six of wands, the knight of cups. Interesting. Third, eight of wands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King of swords and the five of cups. We're talking. Ten of swords. There's an ending here. Interesting. Death, six of wands, the knight of cups. Someone said that they kind of had an ego death when it came to you. It's not about pride. It's not about pride. It was never about pride or seeing or being seen. It's, they're saying it's, it's different. At Six of Wands, there was this feel-good energy about you that they had towards you that was connected to a sense of, this feels really good, and I like being seen by you. I like sharing my energy with you. Perhaps it was a little flirtatious. Perhaps it's a little, it was a little showy-offy. But Death is here saying it's not about that for them. It was Knight of Cups and how they love you, something like this. And then the Eight of Wands, King of Swords, the Five of Cups, there is a sense here of regret loss, remorse, and seeing this in the absence of communication. It's kind of like saying, I wish I had said something. I don't quite know what it is, but we'll get there. We're going to take a look at that. Ten of Swords is an ending. It's painful. It's owie. How permanent that ending is, I don't know. We're going to start right there. All things are negotiable. <laughs> Even in suspended states, so let me make this clear, I don't see you two connect in 3D yet. There's the proposition of it here, but it's a regret for somebody in their mind, King of Swords, I wish I had said X, Y, Z, or I had done something, you know, because the sword represents thought as well as action. And then we have the communication there with the Eight of Wands. So someone is remorseful about the lack of communication and or acting, wishing that they had. 
I'm very curious, actually. Um, I like where you're at. They're showing me something that says it. Yeah, it felt good, but it wasn't about that. It was about how I love sads. Okay. Interesting, because it's at the heart of the reading, Six of Wands, so I know it's important. All right, let's see that Ten of Swords, please. Show me that Ten of Swords, show me that Ten of Swords, show me that Ten of Swords. Show me that Ten of Swords, please. Show me that Ten of Swords. Moon, the high priestess. Oh, ooh, ah, yeah, yeah. ow! So much water over the ten of swords. Why, 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 Sag? Why does this happen? Because it's life, and we are human beings. We're not perfect creatures. Oh, if we were, terror wouldn't exist. A lot of things wouldn't exist. Neither would art, for that matter. If you're perfect, you have no need for fantasy, feeling, or imagination. So there goes art and everything you ever known that had to do with expression. So, no. Human beings and perfection, these concepts do not match. No, uh, Ten of Swords here right in the opening. I'll see what happened between you two. Out of it, though, one person, through the ending, they understood their feelings. And I hate saying that. I hate, I hate saying... Well, it looks like an ultimatum, but it's not an ultimatum, guys. It's not an ultimatum. I can see those, and I never recommend them. What I'm saying is I hate that when things have to get so far, they have to go into places of pain and ending for someone to understand the truth. And in that Ten of Swords, something came out of the moon. The soft place, the intuitive place, the feeling. It's all water, baby. All water. You might have some water in your chart. Could be connecting one. We do have Scorpio here. We also have Pisces, but that may or may not mean anything. It's not exclusive. So please don't rule out the reading just because you don't connect it to those or you don't have those placements. Okay. Um, the moon, the high priestess, and the ace of cups through that kind of pain and disillusionment and the confusion and the mangles of the bodies and the thoughts and the swords and the metaphors and all that. What was born out of that was a sense of intuitive feeling. My heart was in this. Fuck. Right? Kind of like that. I'm guessing that was for you. That is in your overview. It's not an accusation. Don't take it as one. It's a real human experience. And like I said, I hate that anyone has to experience ending and pain in order to understand these things. But honey, if your heart space was under the moon for this, and so too was your intuition, guess what? When we put our intuition away, because we don't want to feel it, it's not convenient. And it goes under the moon. Yeah, you can't access your heart, honey. You can't access intuition literally without feeling. It's not possible. So if we put our intuition away under the moon, I'm not trying to feel my way around this. I don't want to. Right? The heart space went along with it. So this is, I believe, in your overview. Could be them, yeah. They kind of already willfully admitted to me that it wasn't about the pride of the ego or the... Did they feel good around you? A thousand percent. <laughs> I'm saying it was always about the, the feeling they had towards you. So I'm wondering here if this is your reaction after the ending. That high priestess came out of the moon with a kind of sigh. My heart was here too. I love this too. And we're feeling this now. Which would explain perhaps why you're in an upside down state trying to better understand these things. Let's go on and jump over there. Let's go ahead and skip your page of wands. I think he speaks for himself. A little bit of inquiry. Let's see the ace of swords. Let's just jump right into that meat and potatoes, <laughs> as we would say. Let's see that ace of swords. Some of that ace of swords. Some of that ace of swords. Going back to my thought on ultimatums, if you're ever in that position with somebody, if you don't do blah, 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 then I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. So if it ever gets to that point of ultimatums, it's usually over. What I was trying to think there is that um, it's almost like a spiritual ultimatum from the universe. It's like if we can't get in touch with this, you will lose it. Okay. But we often don't understand that until after. So it still serves a purpose. It does. It doesn't feel good. 
but we still get to learn about ourselves and our love and why we did these things. Um, so it's still something of value, even if we learn about it, let's say, posthumously, <laughs> after the ending of something, you know? Let's see that Ace of Swords, please. Let's check out that truth. The world. <laughs> Strength. Page of Cups. It's the truth that's growing on us. That perhaps pride got in the way. The strength there. Strength, guys, is always worth looking at in my book because we can't assume that it's positive. There's some cards in the deck that we automatically assume are negative, such as death and the devil, and they get no credit for their positive sides, just like strength almost always gets all the positive credit without seeing the cons of it. All cards, all signs, all elements in nature have pros and cons. That's it. No argument. Strength has a major con. Pride. We're saying here the truth. The truth, Christina. The one that was under the moon. I'm just saying it now because before it was blocked by pride. It's like we couldn't admit to ourselves, right? How this impacted us or how we would feel towards it after it was gone. And you're saying the pride's down now. It's not completely gone, but that strength to resist the knowledge, the strength to resist the feeling. You're saying we're looking at it now. And truth be told, Christine, it kind of sucks. I hate it. Nevertheless, you're doing it. So good points to you. We cannot grow or evolve if we don't look at the stuff that makes us uncomfortable, makes us feel uncomfortable, even maybe miserable. In order to do that, we have to access everything we shoved under the moon or pride wouldn't allow us to get just got in the way. The truth is coming forward now. Okay, so full points to that for looking at it, experiencing it, and not judging yourself for it. Don't judge yourself for it. Allow the thoughts and feelings to wash over you without judgment because that's pride getting in the way. Okay? Don't suppose you know everything or have all the answers yet. Because if you did, you never would have felt the need to shut this out to begin with. Okay, that's assuming we have the answer to a question that was there for us the whole time to answer. When we assume we know what's up, we get ourselves into so much trouble. We assume to block this or it won't impact me or have no feeling for it. That's assumption. It's like trying to tell ourselves, I know what's up, I can't be tricked, I can't be fooled. Who said this was trying to trick or fool you? No, 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 that was coming from a place on the inside. I can tell you have a phenomenal strength of mind. If you're saying, I'm not going to get emotionally involved, and you told yourself that, you shut down your intuitive process so you didn't have to feel your way around it, and you didn't question it, and now you're doing a reversal on all that. Okay? Because how things ended up didn't feel right either, did it? So now we're looking at it. Let's see your hanged man. I'm very curious about you today. Let's see that hanged man, please. Show me that hanged man. Show me that hanged man, please. Show me the hanged man. The devil, the magician, the nine of pentacles. Okay, yeah, like I said, the answer that you had the first time did not suit, especially when you kind of forced it or streamlined it to go into the direction that you told yourself was correct. Uh, this will not affect me, etc. We're, we're, we're looking at this now with the hanged man and uh, the devil, the magician, the nine of pentacles. You're saying what you learned is that you wanted to be very strong-willed towards this, that you wanted to maintain your independence from it. Um, that it would not affect you. You keep saying that. You keep saying that. It's like, this wasn't supposed to affect me. I said so. I willed it. You're looking at this hanged man. Okay. And you're saying you got some patterns that got in the way here between understanding who you are and what you were desiring. Okay, what does it say about me? Right. Um, that I wanted this, 
but I also told myself, no, I didn't. I'm independent from it. It can't affect me. And so we're looking at the conflict here of what we manifested in our desires, where is that stemming from, and how we said we weren't going to get mentally or emotionally hooked or involved in this, and it turns out we kind of did, okay? So you're kind of taking these parts down bit by bit, okay, like you would an engine. It's a very meticulous process. And that's what I'd see you doing from a suspended state, non-action at this time. You're looking at yourself emotionally, energetically, mentally, spiritually, at all your particular pieces and why this thing played out the way it did. And there's lots of reasons. There's lots of working parts and parts that wanted to work and function, such as your intuition. You said, no, you were not going to feel your way around this one because you felt it edging closer and closer to your heart before the ending. You're saying it will not affect you as an independent person. Um, you will not get addicted to it. You you find yourself in this connection where you did as a form of potentially being addicted. You're like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm a free, own, independent person. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I don't want you to be addicted to anything either. But the fact that you couldn't leave it alone, the kind of answer you tried to smother and suppress yourself with and say it's fine, just made you want to desire this more and more. Because the truth of you wanted to love this. The truth of you said, I wanted to open up towards this and be honest with it. I wanted to showcase my real self to this. So even while you said, I won't personally allow it to attach myself to me, because that answer would not suffice, you felt probably more addicted to it than you cared for. Not because it's bad, but because the natural parts of you that wanted to invest in it wouldn't, weren't allowed. It's actually quite interesting how you're learning these things about yourself. You, whatever this connection is, you wanted it for the right reasons. You felt it intuitively and affecting your heart space, so you, you put that under the moon. You found yourself thinking about it quite a bit, and your pride said, nope. <laughs> I'm not thinking about this person. I'm not thinking about this person. And the more you did that, the more you told yourself you're an independent agent and nothing's going to affect you like that, the more it started to feel like a empty desire, didn't it? Just kind of reinforcing or doubling your need down to distance yourself from this while you were still pulling it in. Your reasons were always good and healthy as far as I could tell. And we're kind of reversing all this now. We're looking at it now. And why do you still feel inherently called to it? Does that mean there's still some part of you that's wrong, broken, or unfixed? No. No, that's what you needed. It was those same assumptions and judgments that got you into trouble to begin with when everything you needed to know about this situation was actually honest from the very beginning. Okay. Um, so I'm very curious now about this. Oh, my, my, my. Let's, uh, let's jump on over to this person. Okay. Show me, show me death. They might just straight up be Scorpio, but um, death to pride and ego, particularly in how they felt with you or around you. They said, yeah, it felt good, but it wasn't about that. Um, let's see that Scorpio. And, uh, Scorpio, it might be. Sorry. <laughs> I don't keep looking at it. I keep looking at death and... Death is death, but for some of you straight up, that person is Scorpio. <laughs> it's kind of rolling off me a little bit in waves right there. <laughs> that's, that's the thing about Scorpio. They, whenever they have a death, they claim it. It's like, I want you to know. I want you to know. I don't know why we're like that. We just are. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Anyway, let's take a look at death, please. Show me death. Show me death. Show me death. Excuse the background noise. It's pickup day in my neighborhood. Show me death. King of Pentacles. Strength. The Five of Wands. Wow. Show me strength too. Uh... They're saying they resisted the ending as much as they possibly could, but practically speaking, they kept it in place for their own reasons of pride. Wow, lots of noise today. They're usually not that noisy. Somebody has radio on outside, full volume. Hopefully you can't hear that too badly. I might have to stop, do a break, let it pass. 
Come on, move it on, move it on. I just kind of wish they would turn down the radio. I have no idea. I've never heard somebody blast that much radio frequency uh, from their truck before. Anyway, King of Pentacles, Strength of Five of Wands. Man, they resisted ending this as long as humanly possible. They, practically speaking as King of Pentacles, found reasons to keep connecting with it for their own reasons of pride. Uh, they, it was almost like they were priding themselves on how long they could maintain this. I can keep this going, I can keep this going, I can keep this going, I'm cool, I'm resourceful, right? I I have all the logical reasons that I can connect with this in the 3D, and they had their own pride here, and they resisted, they resisted ending the connection much later until they absolutely had to, it looks like, they resisted it. So you had your pride that kept your knowledge and sense of feeling at bay, they had their pride kind of, I will engage with this in any means I can, and they can justify it with the King of Pentacles too. You know, this thing about being resourceful gets you clever. About how it is you can invest in something or someone and just keep it going. Their pride showed up too. Their pride also told them to stop doing this. <laughs> you know? So you had pride to reject what you were feeling and thinking. They had pride to keep this going, even though they were kind of showing me a conflict of conscience and will, you know. I should probably stop doing this, but no, I'm going to keep finding reasons to connect. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Until they couldn't, right? Let's see that Six of Wands, please, for this person. Show me that Six of Wands. Show me that Six of Wands. So you both kind of have that pride, conflict of will thing going on. Yours is resist. I'm my own person. I'm not hooked or engaged in this at all. They're like, I can keep this going. I don't care how much it costs me. Even though their pride got affected from distribution or investing. Okay. 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 Okay, let's see that six of wands, please. Nine of swords, page of pentacles, the eight of cups. And uh, every time they connected with you, no matter how small, no matter how small the pretense was, they felt a growing or increasing anxiety. And now they were connecting with you and uh, becoming emotionally distant. They understood, honey, when they... When it was time to introduce the 3D energy, they found reasons. They're very resourceful, this person is. They're very resourceful. They found reasons, rhyme and reasons, justifications. Even though they probably told them to stop, they kept doing it. And every time they invested, they became more consciously aware of how this was affecting them. Their own sense of pride was working against them. So your pride was working against you. Their pride was working against them for very different reasons. They showing me overly engaged despite knowing better or wanting to be overly finding reasons to engage with you despite knowing better and uh to the point that their energy became thin too thin it's like i can't keep investing page of pentacles i can't keep justifying investing i keep fighting myself on this issue so that means they're fragmented about what they're doing versus what they were getting okay uh they became emotionally numb to this and all uh, the anxiety about giving to this and they're kind of why pride they're like pride towards sides because i like sides because i want it feels good to be connected to sides i don't know they said the more they gave to this and they know they shouldn't have the more it took a toll on them okay yeah i know pride gets in the way like that you're showing me one version of it keeping all this goodness to yourself the mental investment the emotional investment and even your physical investments here they're like, because I gave to this, and I insisted on it, that's their price that they paid. Okay. I think we got a tale of two prides here today, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see that Knight of Cups, please. Some of that Knight of Cups, some of that Knight of Cups. You're both strong-willed. Let's make that clear. Yours, your strength of will's on the inside. Theirs was how much they could give, show off, or invest... You're like, I will not get hooked into this. And they're like, I'm going to find reasons to get you hooked into this. <laughs> or keep it going. 
you know? I think I understand. Let's see that Knight of Cups. The Ace of Pentacles, the Four of Swords, the Hermit, and yet this is one point they hold on to. Did they find reasons to connect with you, even though they probably shouldn't have? Absolutely. Did they find reasons to invest when they shouldn't have? Absolutely. The reason why I say that, guys, is that once you understand you're investing and you're not getting the investment back, which I don't think you were very much, again, for reasons of pride, you refrained um, mentally, emotionally, and physically. At some point, you understand you're kind of the idiot, right? And it kind of makes sense. It's like, I'm putting so much of myself in this, I'm not getting much back. And that's why they became numb, shut down, walked away. And they said, this kind of isn't worth it. And it was on me. I knew better. They're being very honest about that. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, remains once I took the pride away for this person and um, they emotionally detached due to reasons of, of self-conflict, high levels of self-conflict, pride, all that stuff. Once that all that goes away, they no longer invested in 3D. I see that their love for you remains. So that's that's the purest part. That was always, I think, the point of this person, finding reasons to connect with you at the surface value, 3D. And that's because they were trying to act and or speak from the heart. Um, to this day, they still think about you. Yes. They still love you. Absolutely. Um, I think this person came across as conflicting in the surface because... They could sense that the biggest part of you was buried, okay? That you were not easily touched in the heart space, and also you didn't want to be. You didn't want your intuition out for this one. I think you're highly intuitive, but when it came to this connection, you buried it. Um, that way you didn't have to feel your way around it because you knew where it would take you, love. Just to recap. And that's one of the things that caused the ending, and I can see why. If this person's investing in you, but they're not seeing any signs of emotional life from you, that you were emotionally invested or mentally invent invested, spiritually invested, Eventually, that person was going to take the hint. I'm just trying to keep connecting to Satch because I said I would or that I could or that I had the time and money to burn. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? And that, you know, eventually I'll get something back. And typically, the more you have to demonstrate your value, you're actually showing anti-value. The more you put into someone who doesn't give back, you are actually showing anti-value. And it's a tale as old as time. A lot of people have done it. I've done it. At least once. I mean, can you say you're human if you haven't done that at least once? And it's not because they're an asshole, no. It's because they wanted you to engage with them emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. All those things that I'm pointing out again that you withheld intentionally. You wanted it. You had such a commanding will that you would not allow those things to come through. So what you were left with is this sticky, if icky sense of self why am I still desiring this? I'm not mentally, emotionally, or whatever invested in this. Why do I still want it? That's because your real answer was hidden the whole time. And for their part, they stuck around, I think, trying to pull the real answer from you. Because when I take away that sense of I have to try, I'm just saying two human beings kind of screw up with each other, I suppose. Neither one of you is right or wrong. It's just you both did what you did. Yours and theirs isn't about a versus, guys. It's about trying to understand both sides. Now, I will sometimes see something that's so wrong-footed, I'm going to call them out. Check out Leo's. <laughs> Yours, I think it was just two human beings being two human beings. Okay. <clears throat> you played your part, they played theirs. Because what I still see for you fundamentally, what counts is love. That was always their main point with you, which when I look at their main point is actually a lot softer on the outside where they're saving face or fighting for this or investing and it's repetitious. It wears down on them and it's no longer a thing about showcasing or trying to get you interested. It was just love. It was always love. And I think this is just overcompensation for someone who has a really strong poker face. You didn't want to be seen as being seen by this person, not like that, by choice. That was your choice, and you're learning, you're learning that now, and you're seeing that now after the fact. And uh, they're doing a lot of personal work. I'm just seeing a lot of personal self-work here. It's quiet. It's internal. Again, because you two aren't currently, I think, present-day connected. So this is a lot of work on the self. They just know when all this is stripped aside, 
This is more like who they are. It's softer. It's reflective. It's considerate. It's loving. It works hard. Um, and they're saying, you know what? I did what I did. And I still love them. What I did was out of love and perhaps I presented it all wrong and screwed up and I should have stopped a lot earlier when Sag wasn't given back or they're showing me that they were shut down. They're like, I'll take that hit, but I still know who I am. And at the end of the day, I did what I did because I love Sag. That doesn't mean they're right. Okay. But I do like how they kind of took a temperature check. They're saying this was on the surface. This was pride. This was ego. But this is why I actually did it. It was love. Okay. Um, all right, let's go on over here to the shared King of Swords. Yeah. Let's see that King of Swords, please. Show me that King of Swords for Sash. The sun, death, the star. Mm -hmm. Fourth just tried to pop out of my hand, ace of wands. Some of you want to know over here, I mean, you, this is on your mind for a reason. It's not incidental. You're thinking about it now. So this is post-credits connection. <laughs> Absolutely post-credits. I mean, we've, we've been over it, okay? I repeat myself so we can stay on point, okay? The cumulative effect is such is that at least one person here, and given the fact that you are trying to accelerate your knowledge base about what happened and why, okay, and how um, pride did not allow us to do what we wanted to do, and we kind of misconstrued it for independent strength of will, okay, because I said so, it will not happen, right? So the sun, we're not happy, death. This, this is anti-happiness. We have one person here acknowledging it, king of swords. Okay, I believe it's you with the leveled up effect, with insight and knowledge. Again, not an accusation or judgment, don't take it as one, although it's your choice to shoot the messenger. If this is a reading today, it's either yours or it's not, end of story. No need to be upset about it. Again, we're working with human beings here, guys. That's it. If you don't identify as a human, then congratulations, you're perfect, you don't need to watch tarot. They weren't perfect either, in case I didn't point that out enough. Like I said at the beginning, there's no such thing. So we are not happy here. That's that's the long and short of it. Death and the sun. We are hyper aware of this. The star and the ace of wands. Again, this is the fourth that fell into my hand. Could we hope to fix, repair the star, the vision? Can we still have hope for that vision? We're not happy. We admit this. Is there hope here? Do you want a brand new opportunity or would you like to renew it? The stars in another fashion can represent the idea of long-term healing. I very rarely interpret it that way because it has to be a very deep desire in order to retain a vision that long of healing. Okay. Like I said, we have plenty of healing cards in tarot already enough. I don't need to default the star to that. It's You're saying, though, in another way... Can I still wish upon that star, even if it is further out? Can I still have hope for it? That is a renewed ace. Um, but it's a potential. You won't know until you start reaching for that star. But I do appreciate and respect your opening construct. I'm not happy. We know this. Do I dare wish upon that star again? Or do I need to aim for other things? I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's see that eight of wands. Let's see that eight of wands, some of that eight of wands, some of that eight of wands. Some of that eight of wands, please. Pride is meant to protect us, guys, but like all things, it can be misconstrued for one reason or another. 
Okay, especially if we think we understand what pride means and what it means to us and how what we do with it is what counts, guys. There's nothing wrong with the notion of it, like all things. It's what we do with it that counts. Eight of Wands to the Eight of Wands, Page of Swords, the Two of Swords. I have two people struggling to speak with each other. They want to, though. Let's make that clear. Eight of Wands is there twice. I'm trusting that as opposed to the confusion, which can be apparently cleared up over time. Page of Swords, the Two of Swords. There's uncertainty on both sides. Let me make that clear. It's literally shared. Eight of Wands is here twice. There's confusion on both sides about whether or not there is a purpose here to speak. And if so, what would that look like? What would the language look like? What would the words look like? How would they feel? What would be said? What should be shared specifically? Uh, we're still opening up towards this, but eventually the Eight of Wands that need to communicate is going to take over those pages. That page of swords can't hold back that level of communication or rather the desire of it. Um, the confusion around the communication here, well, like I often say, the problem is therefore the solution. So if the problem is communication, therefore the solution stands one and the same. What was not said is the first thing that needs to be said. What was not done is what needs to be done. Okay? So do the opposite of what the confusing elements are that were introduced to this in the beginning with. And as far as I can tell, it was for you insisting that this wouldn't affect you individually, and it did. Heart space, mental, spiritual, all that. Them understanding where they screwed up and why they kept trying to insert their energy to engage you, and perhaps it was for reasons of flattery at the upfront, but it was like, uh, I don't know how, and I'm not excusing it, it's almost like I'm barely allowed to have any surface time with sads, so I've got to make the use of it the most use of it. This is what I can do. This is what I can say. This is what I it, But behind it all was love. It was love. Even if it came out on the surface as justification of this is what I can do, show off a little bit. But uh, if they understood, and I believe they did in some way that you were very far away and hard to reach. Yeah, I can see where they cost themselves a lot out of pride to participate in this. It was an effort to reach you. I believe. I believe. I mean, look how far away you were. And you're seeing that now for yourself. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. That's the thing about tarot, guys. If you resonate, I can't tell you anything you don't already know, except unless it's predictive, insight, unexpected, you know? I'm just really confirming. Let's see that Five of Cups, please. Let's see that Five of Cups. Let's see that Five of Cups. The Eight of Wands carries with it a great deal of potential. But that insistence upon confusion and I don't know what to say has to be overrode. And then, and only then, that is predictive then, will the lines of communication open up. But those that page of swords to a sword, that can be overridden like that. That's nothing. Just don't get lost to it. Nine of Swords, Ten of Pentacles, the Chariot. Okay. Five of Cups. There is a remorse here. There is a sadness here. Nine of Swords, anxiety, stress, Ten of Pentacles, stability, environment, Chariot. The more we hang back in this insistence of it might be easier just to call it a loss, it actually proves to be quite difficult because it's always going to feel unresolved. Like I said, I see the possibility of lines of communication opening up for both sides, but if we opt or lean into that page of swords and the two of swords, which is nothing compared to the proposal of maintaining the star or trying to re-engage that star, it's all for naught. There is that sense of you will always move forward into a place of stability and feel like you're leaving a big part of you behind always kicking rocks, always feeling bad about that particular subject and that particular timeline in your life as you almost forcefully move forward into a place of Ten of Pentacles. I'm going to drag myself forward and you'll be carrying around a lot of stress and emotional leftover residuals towards this and I don't want that for you, okay? Is there a possibility for real communication and to at least feel better about this? Absolutely. Even you admit it to me, you're not happy. You don't have to carry that unhappiness with you. And I'm not saying you have to kiss and make up. What I'm saying here 
is to least sort things out. That's possible, if nothing else. If you want to kind of pick yourself up by the bootstraps and say, this is what matters, this is the only priorities, and every now and again you hit that pocket of sadness, remorse, and mental reflexive stress when you think on this, you can. A lot of people do that. you got to pick what's right for you. The things you can live with versus the things you cannot live with. You've learned a lot personally myself. I would like to see you apply that knowledge. You are learning a lot. And you haven't learned everything. I almost want to interpret these last three on that Five of Cups is them, and it could be. Almost like saying I've tried to... I've tried to focus on what matters, and I've tried to move on, and a part of me is still very sorry about how things turned out. Whoever has the most anxious mind here, that's that person. This is that person who thinks about everything. Whether they like it or not, they think about everything. You know, you have your version of what happened, so do they. Whoever has such a strong sense of, of driving force attached to their 3D, this is my priority. There's that part that I've always been regretful about. Always. And I try not to take it with me, but it does, and I can't pretend it doesn't, that kind of thing. Something I've thought about a thousand times, and every now and again it catches my breath about what was lost, said and not said, etc. Um, it could be them. I kind of hope that we get past this, because these two are nothing. These two can't safeguard a safe of uh, eight of wands, never mind twice, to save their life. Can people get lost to it because they're insisting I have nothing to say or I wouldn't know what to say? Absolutely. Is that the truth? No. No. That's where we want our knowledge to stop and start. That way we have an excuse to not do anything, and it's... Where's this? Has a lot more potential. Anyway, I kind of wish you both luck on this. Um, I really want that, that Eight of Wands to come through. I think you both need it. I do. Like I said, it's not about kissing and making up, guys. It's just perhaps an understanding each other a little better after the fact. You can understand yourselves a little better, too. You're already working on it anyway, and I say that they have their own version of it. Process with caution. One of the time cards got <clears throat> picked up with the oracles here. Okay. Rejection, loss, fragmented. Yeah, I know. Both sides. Feeling of rejection, loss, and fragmentation on both sides. They felt it initially, but they kept trying to engage with you. And you were like, I'm prepared to reject this and not engage with it because I'm in control of me, right? Okay. Epiphany, breakthrough, well, release, surrender. Hurts. Okay. All right. So, honey, I hope this helped you. I do. Like I said, a little eight of wands could do you both good. Put in the comments. Take care. Be well.